Hi, welcome to another video. First of all, you'll have to excuse me if I sound a bit croaky. I've got a stinking cough and sore throat. So today I'm going to show you how to configure your Snadpick PIC32MZ2048ECM100. Get the SD card working. Um, at the moment this is running yeah, the PIC32MZ at 16-bit and Microelectronica's PIC32MZ2048 ECH124 is running the Matrix 7-inch screen. That's 5-inch screen, 7-inch screen, 16-bit. And I'll give you a quick look at the wiring diagram, show you how to configure the SDO and SDI for the memory card, which I'll take out now. Just a little 2 gig memory card formatted to FAT16 so if I reset that uh, and I'll show you another couple of tips for just you know running loads of pictures I can't have the same program on here because I've only got one micro SD card uh, or one 2 gig card all my others sort of like 32 64 gig so if I give you a look at this Snadbeck, finally wired it up. I've got it running off this external USB battery pack. Incidentally, I had a cheap one from China and it was only outputting 4.4 volts. This Belkin one, double the money, outputs five volts. So the internal switch mode power supply is working fine. So this is the Snadbeck. Have a look on eBay. As I say, it's got the PIC32MZ microcontroller finally got it working in 16-bit mode and I'll give you some tips so this 5 inch display it's actually got an SD card a large SD card holder on the back but the Snadpick board it's got the micro SD now they come pre-programmed with microchips bootloader but I just erase that program this set up 5 wires program it with microelectronics micro prog programmer 99 US dollars plug it in there program it external power supply job done there's some LEDs there but I've already discussed that so I'll show you how to configure the SPI using peripheral pin select on this so what I'll do I'll reprogram this in 8-bit mode so you can see the difference in speed and I'll add some colours as well. So while I'm programming I thought right I'll show you this error message. So using that external programmer I get this message. Oh. So this error message says device detected PIC32MZ1024 ECM100. It's not, it's a PIC32-2048 ECM100 and then device selected, what I've programmed it with, PIC 32 MZ 2048 ECG 100. I have not selected an ECG, I've selected the ECM. So you have to go continue anyway. And then again, as it chip arrays, it does the same again. So I'm sure there's I'm sure there's software issues with the micro external micro prog programmer. I don't get it with the internal one on the fusion. But having said that on the fusion, I've only got one MZ microcontroller. So that's a bug you have to be aware of. Right, and that is the PIC32 MZ2048 ECM100 running in 8-bit mode. And you can see it's quite slow. So while it's running through some of the pictures, I think there's actually 21 pictures, I just, yeah, five wires for the programming connected to the external programmer, and that's it.
So this is a five inch TFT, and then you've got over the back that seven inch TFT. Now in Microelectronica's current compiler, the current version, as of today, what are we in June 2016, you can plug this seven inch TFT straight onto a board, configure it in eight bit TFT mode, 800 by 480, and it will work straight away, nothing to configure. Now going back to this five inch screen, and you just saw the red, a couple of years ago, when I first got this five inch screen, it wouldn't show reds, and you have to adjust the first register in the B0 register. I think uh, I had the wrong code, but today I'm using AE. You still have to adjust that register in 8-bit mode. So if you count how many seconds, so one, let's start again. One London, two London, three, one London, two London, three, one London, two London, three. So it's, what's that taking, two and a half seconds or so? One London, two London, that's just for colour. One London, two London. One London, two London, three London. I think I started a bit late. Now, unfortunately, the now, unfortunately, the pictures, the speed of the pictures are governed by the speed at which you can run an SD card. So the SD cards, in case you don't know, there's a little microcontroller in there, spits out serial data. You can't clock these much faster than sort of 12, 13 megabits a second. Uh, so this is obviously the FAT16. FAT32, I believe, is faster. I was thinking of using USB, but then USB 1 has a maximum clock speed of 12 megabits. Uh, might try some flash RAM or something, don't know, see if it's quicker. So any picture uh, download is going to be governed by the speed of your SD card and SBR clock. So you see that working on 8-bit. Now I'll put it back to 16. Now that's on 16-bit, you try and count how quickly those colours race down the screen. You can't, it's too quick. But I think you get about six colours in about two seconds. And then you can see the pictures very fast as well. One London, two, well, maybe one and a half seconds. One London, two London. Yeah, something like two seconds for a picture. So if you haven't seen my other videos, yeah, so this is Snadbit MZ, 32-bit microcontroller, uh, SD card up there, you can have external power supply in, or run it off the USB. And I've got the USB battery pack. And there's my programming wires over in the corner. Right, this is the current wiring for this 5-inch TFT, so as per usual, the first 8 bits of the data on RE0, so 0-7, uh, they're the touch panel pins not used, uh, although I've now cut them off, these are the SD card pins, then you've got the read and write pins over here, register select, I've got on RV13, and then they're the top 8 data pins. I believe two of them have moved compared to the PIC32 MX795. And that's the flash chip select, but if you've got an SD card holder, you haven't got any flash on the board, reset, and then the LED backlight. So that's how I've wired it today. So I also made a mistake the other day. I was looking at this and the second part, I had this out of shot, so the SD card on the snap pick, we want the, the input is wired to RD11 and we want to change whatever it's mapped as, change it to SDI4, so serial data in 4, which is SPI4. 
So serial data in four, they're the remappable bits, three, two, one, zero, so four bits there. We want RD11, which is just up here. So we want to configure these four bits to zero, zero, one, one. So this is the input and then the output, scroll down. So that's input mapping continued. So we're looking for RA15 on SD04. So uh, over here, SD01, 2 and 3. This is what I had blanked out the other day. We're looking for SD04. So that you could select any of these pins and have it output that function. Any of these pins will output those functions. So look, here we are, SD04. But we want RA15. Let's have a look. So RA14, RD14. And that second bank, RA15 there. So remappable. RA15, the one means it's not available on 64 pin devices. Down the bottom of the screen. So we want SD04 mapped to RA15. So there's definitely RA15 over there. Look for SD04 over here. And it's there, so look, one, zero, zero, zero. It gives you SD04 on RA15. And there we go, RPA15R, zero B, one, zero, zero, zero. That's how you remap the SPI on the Synapic. Initialize the external memory. initialize 16-bit parallel master port then SSD that's the uh, initialize the SSD with a 1963 chip 800 by 480 and then TFT set mode this is my 7 inch these are my registers for the 5 and 7 inch display and the wild one filling it with a load of colors and just showing the pictures so what you would normally do in Microelectronica is TFT external image, external because it's on an SD card. And if you're using Visual TFT, it creates these files with the various pictures. And I was having a look at a program a couple of years ago and I noticed that they didn't list them all. They were just incrementing a number. So actually if you take two of these numbers, subtract one from the other, it gives you a decimal value of 768006 so 768006 we convert that 768006 to hexadecimal instead of TFT image and then the name you put along there as a picture and then increment the picture by that decimal value which in the hexadecimal BB806 and all you have to do is either have it count up to the end of the memory card if it's full or up to how many pictures you've got on there. And so I've just added sort of 21, 22 pictures. So if the picture number gets up to that, it shows them all. And it goes back to the first picture. That saves you writing out all the list of pictures. So this is initializing the 16-bit parallel master port and all the bits with crosses or X's, they're the bits I added just testing. There's many ways you can write all these bits, but Microelectronica do have an example. Uh, in particular, this, this weight M, the default value is actually zero. Uh, it has to be one, otherwise it won't work. So that's the parallel master port. And as I say, the bits with X's are other ways of writing these individual bits. 
if you're using the 5 inch display in default mode you still have to set that first register, the B0 register still have to set it to AE to get it to show reds uh, other, other than that it's uh, normal default mode so this is my B0 register for the 5 inch screen so you can see the first line AE 23211E10 that's what I use and in case you haven't seen my other videos I'll give you a quick look at these B4, that's just well, setting up all the sync pulses and everything um, B4 and B6 now between the 5 inch and 7 inch screen all you have to do is change this register I had it on 2E for a 7 inch but 46 works well for the 5 inch and that's my TFT wiring so the little, these are other pins like chip select um, and other pins you may have or, and other pins you may be using on the board found on my fusion board if for example this chip select was on an address line it stopped the whole thing from working so I'm not sure it didn't used to happen on the MX795 but using one of the address lines which I'm actually using in this instance it stops the program from running so try and keep additional pins off the address lines on the pic 32 mz so that's it this video hasn't really been about you know, a 5 inch and 7 inch tft it's how to either get your microelectronic fusion board running the mz microcontroller and configuring the spi or the snapic with the mz microcontroller uh, if you want to know more detail about how to configure these screens, have a look at my videos I did years ago. Or, or there are other examples on the internet, but this was primarily you know, showing them working in 8-bit and 16-bit mode. Yeah, so a tip, keep any spare pins off the address lines. Uh, remap your SPI for the SD card, and you should be away. And you can see, so PIC32 MZ microcontroller is nice and fast. Hopefully this has helped. Thank you for watching.